Do you like my color bear? Look. I love red. If you're still with me, I'm really, really happy <laughs> that you are. <laughs> I, I went on a course to try and um, build up my confidence again because it's been such a long time since I've done public speaking. And with COVID and everything, it just uh, made it quite difficult to build up one's confidence. Um, and it was one that's run by Andy Harrington. He's amazing. Absolutely amazing man. Uh, and uh, that's given me the courage now to, to do these videos for, for, for my books and to tell you a little bit about myself. So I know there's lots and lots of videos out there. But my son tells me, my number three son, the youngest of my children, I've got four of them, one girl and three boys, uh, um, two different husbands, but I did marry them before I had the kids. Anyway, they're gorgeous kids, gorgeous kids, not so good on the man, but the kids are gorgeous. Right, so what was I saying before I so rudely interrupted myself? Oh, yes. Um... My number four son, well, he's number four of my children, number three of my sons. Uh, he says to me, Mother, about a billion people visit YouTube a day. I think he said that. So of that billion, I just hope a handful, that's sort of my age group or whatever, find me entertaining and interesting enough to give me a listen. Because I tell you something. To make anything of your life, you need to have the ability to concentrate for more than 15 seconds. You're going to miss so much in life if you do that. Just <gasps> mm, don't like the look of her. Don't like what she's saying. Can't stand the voice. I'm going. Well... <laughs> don't do that not nice I think you'll get to like me once you know me <laughs> anyway that's enough of that nonsense right then so I worked uh, once I got my articles at the Greater London Council I worked very hard um, learning all the different aspects I mean, working for the Greater London Council was like working for a big West End firm. They had so many different departments. They had a litigation department. They had a conveyancing department. They had an administrative law department and so on and so forth. So I had uh, experience in all the different departments. And uh, the one that I found most stimulating and exciting uh, was the league, uh, was the the litigation? I loved the litigation work, so that was my forte. Um, it takes it's 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 the horses for courses really. Uh, I just like the cut and thrust and the time limits and you've got to be on your metal and that's what I like. I don't like. Uh, I can take whenever, however long I like. I like a little bit of pressure. I must confess I've had a little more than I had I would have liked but that's in life generally anyway so I was near the end of my articles in 1984 when Maggie uh, she'd been working on it for ages she got Horace Cutler to be chairman of the council and he was working from the inside out uh, to to um, destroy and, and break down the GLC from the inside because she couldn't cope. She just made her angry or all, all, all the uh, opposition she was getting from uh, the GLC, um, the, from the people that were in charge. Anyway, talking about Harry Scotler, he was an old guy, but very polite. I saw him one day. I was, that's when I was a young woman and I was in my size 12 uh, pink broad on glazed dress that sort of came off the shoulders a little bit and he was coming I was going in and he was coming out of um, a little vestibule um, to get out and he come into this vestibule 
And he, he looked across and saw me, this vision in pink. It was a lovely warm day. I sound a bit full of myself, don't I? Well, God, <laughs> it's all I got is my memories. <laughs> anyway, he saw me coming and he just held the door open and just stayed there till I walked in. The, I was in the door. I walked down the stairs and across the vestibule with his eyes on me the whole time. And I thought, I've got to start. Don't, 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 don't look shy. Don't look worried. Just walk. And he said, Good morning. And I said, good morning. <laughs> That's my claim to fame, eh? <laughs> anyway, he seemed a nice man. It's just a pity that he was with Maggie. I'm getting rid of a, what was an incredibly good in, uh, institution. Never mind. That was my, um, my view anyway. So, I had to find somewhere else because Maggie was getting rid of the GLC and I had to finish off the last few months of my articles. Now, I lived, uh, I didn't want to stay in London. I wanted to move out of London because I was really getting tired with all this cheap travel, uh, air travel of people pinching my bottom in the underground or, or or showing off their bits on the underground. It was just getting ridiculous and, and, and really not a place for a nice girl. And there were a lot of nice girls there. And I'd been, I'd been uh, interfered with as well uh, one night when I was coming back from invigilating a, a typewriting exam, and which really, really scared me. He could have had a knife or anything. So anyway, that aside... I put in for three three applications, uh, Ealing, Hillingdon, and somewhere else. And I got three interviews. Um, but for some reason, I took the Hillingdon one and I didn't go for the other two. I think I was thinking it's one straight line, you know, but that was a mistake. It was horrible. My boss was horrible. The director was horrible. He set his eyes on me and um, I don't know. It was just nasty, really nasty. So I kept looking for, once I qualified, which wasn't long, I started looking for assistant solicitor's job, which is the next one rung up. So, and, and I was also moving to South Oxfordshire because my brother had moved there and I wanted to be near him. So I started looking for jobs in Reading and in um, in Oxford. Anyway, the Reading one, I got an interview and um, I told them of my change of address that, that that weekend, the very weekend, I was moving from my old place in in um, in London to uh, South Oxfordshire, and I gave them the address. And two weeks went by. I was still at my old job. I hadn't given in my notice yet, so I was driving from South Oxfordshire uh, to 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 Hillingdon every day on on the M40. I think it is or. Yeah, I'm 40, I think. And uh, I hadn't heard anything. So I thought, well, I was sure I had the job. They seemed so, you know, I felt so certain that I had the job. So um, I thought I'd give them a ring. And they said, oh, well, we were getting worried because we haven't heard from you. So I said, well, where did you send the letter? They'd only sent it to my Arpeton address. Incompetence, I tell you. So anyway... I gave them my new address again. They told me I had the job. So they sent me a letter and told me when I could start. So I was able to give in my notice and leave that horrible place. Uh, the, most of the people were nice. It was just the boss and my immediate boss and the director. Um, that uh, had it in for me. Anyway, there we are. I ended up in Reading and Reading was a sealed building. They were in a sealed building with where the windows couldn't be opened and it was air conditioned. And every Monday morning, 
you were wiped. It was a wipeout because this air, I don't know what it was, but I could not think. I had a headache the whole of Monday. And then by Tuesday, I'd got acclimatized and it was all right. But And it was open plan, a bit like Hillingdon, but more so. And I thought, how do you ever get any work done? I am a messy creature. I, I like to have everything out. And I know where everything is and I know what I'm doing, but I like my work around me. And I kept getting the senior solicitor coming and telling me, Aisha, you can't have your desk like this. Are you worried you're going to forget it? Well, yes, actually, I am. So, so no, 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 you've got to put it neat and you've got to put it in the cupboard. Well, I wouldn't do that. I tried to put it neat, but I, I work. That's how I work. I wouldn't be able to work because I'd be worrying. Have I forgotten something? I put things in date order and, and in order of importance. And I like to have it here because I get this done. The others all put their stuff away and just had a clear desk. Well, when the very nice chap, very, very, very nice chap, we were invited to his home for a meal and stuff like that. When he got promoted and he went off to devices, there were all these lovely bundles in the cupboard that nothing had been done on. Oh my, it was Christmas for me. I got them out and I got letters off and I got things done. And I was in the magistrate's court practically every day. <laughs> and, and, and people were turning up for my hearings, Food Act cases hearings. And then my name was being mentioned in the local paper. And then everybody was saying, the other solicitors were saying, how can people turn up when you go? And they don't turn up when we go. And we never get it heard. I said, well... I had learned not to talk too much because they used the youngest person in that place to find out what I was getting paid. Why they were interested, I don't know, because I came from London and I told my bosses, I'm sorry, I'm not going to take a cut because I still have to travel all that way. I won't take a cut from what I was being paid. And they agreed to that. So, But everybody wanted to know and I was so silly. I let this girl wheedle out of me, which created a real problem because she was angry, but she hadn't finished her articles yet. So the minute she finished her articles, she applied to Kensington and Chelsea to for, for, for a job as an uh, assistant solicitor, which she got, and she did very, very well there. After a while, you know, I wanted more children. Uh, my husband has never had never been married, he didn't have children, but, but I'd had two children. The boys were in America now, doing their own thing and uh, working very hard. Uh, uh, nothing was happening. So I applied after a year, I think a year and a half at Reading. I applied to Oxford City because I noticed I should have realised that it wasn't a happy place because they were always advertising for staff, always. But I was in my own little world, so I didn't pick up on that. So they were, they were um, interviewing for a principal solicitor, which was the next stage up for me. So I, I applied for the job. I went and saw my, my, my uh, director first and I said, look, the only reason I'm leaving is, well, there are two reasons. One is this building makes me ill. And the other thing is in Oxford, they've got these, um, they've got the, the hospitals that if I needed um, any kind of treatment to get pregnant, that would be the best place to be. So I told him I'd applied for this job and um, he wasn't happy for me to leave because he was happy with, I supported him when other people were not supporting him, but, but I had to follow my own calling. So he said, okay, fine. I applied for the job, I got it, and the nice thing was I had my own office with a window that I can open. It was a very old building, but I had my own office to begin with. So, um, anyway, I worked there for six years, and there's a lot of racism. They kept trying to undermine me all the time. They kept trying to give me work that they thought I would fall down on. 
And then they were nastier to me than ever when I didn't. And that I did what I, they, I was asked to do. So I couldn't win whichever way I went. So then they got the deputy to start picking on me and, and, and um, trying to mess about with my work. Uh, they got... They took away my competent um, typist and gave me one who wasn't a typist but used to input the information for time, for the um, time thingy, you know. They'd brought in this thing about you've got to allocate your time sufficiently so that you can show that you're worth having there. And she was a sweet girl. And when she was getting on with my work, they then decided, oh, no, no, we can't have this. They're going to move her. So they moved her from her little room, quiet room, and put her in the general office. Where in the general office, one of these other, uh, she was a little African, of African descent girl, really sweet girl. And they, they put her next to this other woman who was an English girl um, who talked non-stop. So my, then my typist couldn't get to concentrate because this girl would keep interrupting her. Then they got fed up with that. Then they gave me this other woman in the typing pool who, don't ask me how, but I'd get a piece of work back. I'd correct what wasn't correct and take it back to her. And it would come back with other things that were correct, then not being correct. It was tough. It was tough. I did my job without fear or favour. But that's enough for now. We're coming to the end of my time in local government. So there won't be too much more of that. Okay? Stay well. And you keep fighting. You let no one, but no one, bring you down. No one has a right, and you don't give them that right. I never did. They wore me down, but they never knocked me down. Bye.